I'm Julia Heberlin, and I'm coming to you from my house in Texas, where I am still sheltered in place. I was thinking how ironic it is that when I think of the word shelter, I think of libraries, and never more so than when I was writing this latest novel. As I began it, an unexpected tragedy happened at my house. After that, I was struggling to write inside the walls where I usually felt the safest and the most creative. It was a librarian who came to my rescue, Cecilia Barham at North Richland Hills, who found a place for me to write in her house of books. I am certain that this book would not exist in its present form without the help of Cecilia and her staff. But that is only the beginning of libraries coming to my rescue which started at age 10 when I was the new girl in Decatur, Texas, and walked a mile to the small town's library every week, where I was introduced to big worlds, big words, big ideas, things that I would not necessarily have encountered otherwise. I also became very close to the librarian there, Martha Hughes, and our relationship extended over her lifetime until she died several years ago in her 90s. It wasn't until her wake that I realized she kept my books on her coffee table. Her pride in me, her role in my success, it all felt very much like a full circle. I go back to speak at the Decatur Public Library now instead of to mine its shelves. Now run by the brilliant creative team of Pat Peters and Denise and Chris, the library proves over and over to me that I can go home again. And then there are all of you, other librarians I know, and many that I don't, who have supported my books over the years. I am so very appreciative. It's hard to believe that we are all the same in the dark. Here it is, my latest book, is my fifth thriller. It contains the same DNA as the others, dark, twisty, set in the Texas that I both love and hate sometimes. It stars two very ferocious female heroines. One is a teenager, missing an eye, lost on the side of a road near a Texas town, who won't say a word. She's blowing dandelions and making wishes. The other is a young cop who is also missing a piece. She's determined to solve not only the mystery of this young girl, but the mystery of a friend of hers who disappeared in this same small town years earlier. I hope, as always, that you can't figure out the end until it is beating down on you. I hope you come to love these young women as much as I did, and that in some little way maybe helps re redefine people's perceptions of physical beauty and strength. That's it for now. Stay safe and know how much authors like me appreciate your vital role in every storm both personal and pandemics. Thanks.